In this video, we will install review and conduct comprehensive performance tests on the Zorin OS 18 distribution to thoroughly evaluate its capabilities. We downloaded the official ISO image directly from the Zorin website where the latest available version is 18 specifically in its core edition for this test. We successfully wrote the complete ISO file to our USB drive then booted the system from it to begin operating in live mode for initial testing. Zorin represents an Ubuntu-based distribution that originated from Ireland and offers three distinct editions, Pro which is paid, Core, and Education versions. The live session demonstrated noticeably slow performance when compared against all other Linux distributions I have tested previously on this identical computer hardware. Upon successfully entering the live session environment, the installation window immediately appeared prompting us to select our preferred language then click Install Zorin OS. We proceeded to choose our appropriate keyboard language layout then made the decision about whether to install additional third-party software packages. For the installation type selection, we carefully considered our options then selected the desired one which erases the entire disk and installs Zorin cleanly. It becomes critically important to correctly select the appropriate disk drive especially when multiple exist to prevent accidentally overriding your main bootloader. We then selected our geographical location, which in my specific case was Guatemala, then entered the required name, username, and secure password combination. We patiently waited for the complete installation process to finish and for the system to automatically reboot while noting the Pro version includes extra desktop layouts and additional tools. As consistently done in all my technical reviews, I utilized a 5 GHz Wi-Fi dongle though no Linux distribution has properly recognized it so far. In previous distribution tests, the Wi-Fi dongle at least appeared in the system and was partially recognized, however, Zorin completely froze and blocked terminal access. I was forced to switch to an alternative 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi dongle and completely reinstall the system since it didn't even permit console access. Following our standard procedure, we proceeded to carefully review all applications that come pre-installed with Zorin, which are essentially the typical standard applications. We then opened the system terminal application and increased the font size significantly to improve overall visibility and reading comfort. We updated the entire system packages, then installed necessary applications, including NeoFetch for system information, SysBench for benchmarking, and Firefox for browsing. We executed NeoFetch to display and observe important system details, including kernel version, package count, desktop environment, window manager, memory, and disk information. NeoFetch doesn't automatically display installed applications like FastFetch can show, so I attempted installing it from GitHub, but encountered technical issues. Using specific terminal commands, we displayed the distribution name, code name, kernel version, memory details, and disk information to calculate total installation size. We attempted to verify the system date handling after the well-known Y2038 problem then ran system deanalyzed to examine the boot time performance. We conducted comprehensive SysBench performance tests starting with CPU evaluation to measure computational power through mathematical calculation processing. Memory read and write testing followed to properly evaluate the speed and efficiency of data access operations within the system RAM. Disk read and write assessments were performed to measure the performance and responsiveness characteristics of the primary storage device. Thread testing analyzed how effectively the system manages multiple threads operating simultaneously under various workload conditions. Finally, we conducted mutex testing to measure the effectiveness of locking mechanisms for managing concurrent resource access properly. We additionally utilized the top command to actively monitor IRAM usage statistics while opening Firefox with a single browser window. Subsequent testing continued with two browser windows including video playback then three windows concluding with four simultaneous windows open. Following all testing, we properly shut down the entire system and meticulously analyzed all the performance results we had obtained.
Zorin OS utilizes Ubuntu as its base with kernel version 6.14.0-33, which is reasonably recent though not the very latest available, installing 1,811 total packages. It employs GNOME 46, which isn't particularly current, and uses Mutter as its window manager while memory usage begins at 1.6 GB. Regarding disk space utilization, we combined what the DF command displayed resulting in 10.9 GB total usage which represents significant consumption. The system properly supports Y2038 compliance, however Zorin requires 2 minutes 51 seconds for booting which proves quite slow compared to other distributions. PC consumes approximately 2,628 MB of RAM initially while increasing by an average of 366 MB for each additional window with Firefox, which is substantial. CPU testing showed 1,079.11 events per second using a single thread while five threads achieved 3,178.86 events per second performance. Memory testing resulted in 6.82 GB per second for read operations and 5.46 GB per second for write operations, both considered low results. Disk testing demonstrated 9.87 MB per second for read operations and 6.58 MB per second for write operations, also relatively low performance. Using five threads, the system achieved 1,338.91 events per second while the four Mutex tests showed only 11.43 events per second, again quite low. Overall, Zorin delivers good visual aesthetics and appearance, but demands substantial system resources to achieve this while including typical applications. The operating system demonstrates high sensitivity to hardware configuration changes and in my case stopped functioning completely including TTY access. My personal assessment concludes that Zorin represents an overrated distribution that provides nothing particularly innovative beyond its visual interface design. That completes our current review and we will continue installing, reviewing, and performing detailed performance tests on additional Linux distributions. If you found this video valuable, please give it a like, leave comments, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell. Until next time.